everybody, this is Travis with the Loadout Room. And today we're going to be taking the My 511 shotgun rig out for a test drive with a few new pouches on it. Well, not new, but new to me. Um, I'm using the 511 All Mission Split Carrier. This is kind of my part of my general testing for it, but at the same time I can talk about the 511 shotgun attachments. So I'm going to go ahead and set the vest up and we kind of talk about how these work. This is the VTAC 25 round pouch. It features a small elastic top where you can put your hands through to get shells from your box of shells. So you take a box of shells and you prep it as so, rip off the corners and top, you align it into the pouch. This is a pretty tight fit. You gotta get it in there just right. There's not a lot of slack in there, doesn't need to be. Now I can zip it up. Again, I can reach in here, you guys can see, and grab a shotgun shell out. Now what I have up here, there's two 511 bandoliers. Each carries uh, five rounds. So let's get and load these up. Let's open this box of ammo here. Now the, uh, the thing with a shotgun is that it has low capacity and it's slow to reload. So you really gotta kind of be a little bit ingenious and you gotta have a, a lot of practice to get good at this. I don't have nearly enough practice to say I'm good at this. But we get a little bit better every time we do it. And I just really love shotguns, so I dedicate probably more time than reasonable to them. Um, so the way I have this vest set up and my general idea about the equipment is that these bandoliers are made for my speed reloads or something I have to do very quickly, a short lull or something like that. someone's covering me while I reload, I would go to these bandoliers to hit my shotgun. Now if I have a moment, the fight's over or it's moving or something like that, I can go to this because this is a little bit a little slower than these bandoliers. It's also a little more secure so it's going to carry your ammo better. I really like having this extra 25 rounds on me. This is a uh, made in 1971 Ohio National Guard shotgun. Features a pretty rare bayonet uh, lug. It's a Remington 870 Wingmaster model, so it has a deep blue finish. It's got a 20 inch barrel and holds seven rounds, I think. I haven't shot it too much. Um, it's a bit of a historical weapon, and I really, really like it. First thing we can do is, uh, since the gun's already empty, yep, we can go ahead and do a couple speed reloads. We can pull it up. Boom. Oh no, I'm empty. Now what I would do is, pretty easy, right? So let's do a few of those. Just drop it if it gets too slow. empty so I only dropped one which wasn't too bad so what we're gonna do that my face so I'm gonna face down range so you guys can see me load through this pouch a little bit easier and uh, you know what we'll do a shoot to load to so I'll have one in the chamber now and I'll go ahead and load two into the pipe to the tube all right so Get the CLP off my hands here, folks. So, target. So it's a little bit slower, as you guys can see. So, you see I'm getting a little bit slower than I'd like to be, but it does get a little confusing reaching into that pouch. It's definitely more for a slower reload, a deliberate reload. So two things happen. If you look in a box of shotgun shells, they run left and right. Actually, I have a box here I'll show you. See how they run up and down, they alternate. So when I put it in there, they come out in separate ways when I pull them out. Now you can say, why don't you prep it? I'll show you why it's kind of dumb to prep it. Now it's just a big chaotic mess in there. I'm not gonna pull this out. But as soon as you get a couple layers off, they all just start moving around anyway. So prepping it's great for the first five, but after that, they're gonna come out the way they wanna come out. So let's do some more slower, deliberate reloading. Say the fight's over, threat's gone, we're reloading. 
So I got my weapon pointed up and safe. Now I'm reaching into shells. I can take my time, look down, load the gun as I need to. Get ready for a counterattack or the next engagement, the next room, whatever's going on. And what's important to remember about a shotgun is that it's not a high volume weapon. You're not su really suppressing enemy, you're not doing anything crazy like that. You're going in, firing two or three shots, it's over. It's a decisive weapon made for close quarters use. So not a lot of shooting is going to be needed. So that's why even right now I'm only carrying, what, 5, 10, 25, 35 total rounds? It's one AR mag and a few extras. So it's really important to know that limitation about the shotgun. Now when it comes to the admin reload, or the, the lull reload if you want to call it that, this pouch works great. Just kind of have 25 rounds, well organized, just sitting right on my vest. But <laughs> Good move, Travis. Good move. What I was thinking just now is that it's probably easier for me to, when you get low, easier for most users just to open it up and dive your hand in and try to, try to go through that little elastic hole. If you got small fingers, it might not be a big issue. But these uh, 2XL hands are not the friendliest for that. So we'll finish up this box of shotgun ammo and call it a bit of a day. I should have some other uh, B footage from different angles that allow you guys to see me loading these. Ooh. Trying not to do what I'm told or two. Man, don't you guys just love shotguns? Oh, bonus, you can just rest your shotgun on this pouch. Probably shouldn't do that. It's something a staff sergeant would probably yell at you about. If you want a short story time, we used to have this corpsman that would, uh, hey, we had uh, three dual mag pouches for our ARs, or for our, I'm sorry, our M4s and 16s. And he would just take a mag out and then rest his AR, or his, oh, gosh. His M4. I've been out that long. I'm forgetting that it's actually called an M4 in the magazine pouch, and this is how he would patrol. So he got yelled at, but he's a corpsman, so no one cares. All right. You know what? Let's run uh, five more emergency reloads, and we'll just see how tired my wrist is. All right. I'm loaded. I think I have two. Fun. That's fun. I don't even know if you guys saw me. I think I stepped too far from the camera. You can do five more. I mean, I got the ammo. I might as well use it up. I don't think anyone's ever sat around and said, oh man, I fired too much of the range today. Um, also, I guess what I should say too, is what's important to know about these bandoliers is they're actually made to ride vertically up and down. They're not horizontal bandoliers, but I'm wearing the hex grid that allows me to run vertical patches horizontal or at a slight angle like so. So you should know that buying before you go into that. So let's see what we got. So we'll start with the gun on empty. So bang, I engage the target. It's not bad, not bad at all. Um, Oh, I guess I should address this too. One way I like to use these bandoliers is when you're shooting, you may lose count of how many rounds you fired or where they were. So I may pick up one from the one spot and then the four spot and then the five spot and where's my ammo? So what I do is I sweep. I can feel it if it's there. So you may have seen me do it a few times. I'm trying to build it to be a habit. But anyway, um, get the shotgun off a little bit. Go ahead and put him here. Oh, take these back off. You guys can see my pretty blue eyes. I really kind of like this setup. I'm digging it quite a bit. This elastic's pretty strong, but it still has enough give for me to get the rounds out with ease. Um, so, yeah. so yeah, but let's see. Doesn't seem like it's budged. 
so I'll take it. This pouch is really cool. I really like the idea, and it gives you a way to carry that extra 25 rounds. Now let's say, you know what? Let's say you're in a, a situation where you have a lull, your shotgun's loaded, but you fired all your bandoliers. So what you should do is if you have that lull and your bandoliers are empty, just refill it from here. So you got that few seconds. Now if I had a shotgun, obviously I wouldn't be using two hands, so let's pretend. Bang, bang. Keeping it down range. And you can just flow into a reloading your bandoliers, because you really want to keep these loaded up. Same thing if you had a side saddle. Now this gun doesn't have a side saddle solely because it's kind of a piece of history. I don't want to start taking screws out, crazy stuff like that. So it doesn't have one. But if you have a side saddle and you're shooting bang, 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 you reload from the side saddle, then why don't you should reload the side saddle itself. That way your reload's a little bit quicker all, all the way around. Um, so overall my impressions are I really like this piece of kit, both pieces. I like being able to, with the all missions plate carrier, run them any direction I want which is really nice. Um, now I have a shoulder injury. You guys may notice if you ever see me shoot, I can't really use this arm very well. So that I'm working with the VA, <laughs> that takes time. So I was having trouble doing straight up for some reason. With these, not so bad because I can curve my arm in, but when I had to reach over, going straight up was a, a pain. So it's actually easier to curve it this way, which doesn't seem like it would be, but then I can rest my arm on the gun or on the uh, pouches and retrieve them. For some reason, going straight up like this the whole way, once I got to these last two, it just wasn't happening. But when I curved them, bring my arm down lower. I don't know how it works, but shoulder injuries are weird all around. So it's uh, no two is the same. But anyway, thank you guys for uh, tuning in. And I hope you learned a thing or two. And feel free to comment how bad my techniques are. I do like to learn. And also that's what the point of YouTube comments are, is to tell me how much I suck. I'm not bitter. Thanks for watching.